Dr. Elizabeth Vaughn is here this morning to tell us more about what researchers found and what it means for everyone. Good morning. That's right. Good morning. First of all, when applied to the skin, the phthalates show up in the urine, a child's urine. Right. So That's what's your right. take on that? It, it was a fascinating study and it was a good study. Um, it also increased the public's awareness of the fact that these toxins get in through our skin. It confirmed what was kind of already suspected, that the skin is a route into the body for these chemicals. In a way, it's not surprising. Cortisone in a cream gets into the body. Herbicides, pesticides are absorbed through your skin. We even use the skin to get chemicals out of your body when we detox you in saunas or special baths. But it had not been scientifically proven that plastics phthalates can be absorbed through the skin. Why reports showed that a lot of doctors had mixed emotions about this? Yeah, and, and you're, that's, that's not going to be surprising because doctors are trained different ways. Um, the, um, uh, the authors, though, to their credit, said that young infants are much more vulnerable to the potential adverse side effects of these phthalates because of their developing endocrine and reproductive systems. They all have estrogenic effects. In fact, in 2006, the European Union banned the use of six different phthalates in toys in, for kids younger than three years old that they tend to put in their mouths. One of these phthalates was one of the ones that was studied in this, in this um, uh, study the other day, DEHP. So there are many different types of phthalates. There are mi lots of them. Wow, didn't realize that. Yes. So what is, what is it about DEHP that is so bad? Well, DEHP um, is a phthalate that has no, it's a known reproductive toxin in animals. It's very, very estrogenic and is being studied aggressively. It's highly estrogenic. It breaks down into several metabolites and three of these metabolites were present in large quantities mm. in yesterday's study. It wasn't highlighted because the DEHP didn't correlate with the consumer products being tested. So you didn't hear about this yesterday. The other phthalates that they were studying did correlate with the products. The problem is these kids are swimming in DEHP, which is highly estrogenic. So the big question is, do we have real evidence that DEHP is bad for humans. Absolutely. This, there's, again, it's being studied aggressively. Probably the easiest thing to, to go back to is studies in Puerto Rico back in the 90s that showed that they had the highest incidence of premature um, puberty. That is, girls having breast development and sometimes menses before age eight. Uh, and they found that it correlated very closely with extremely high levels of DEHP in the girl's blood. Um, so that the infants in this study are also getting high exposure, probably from food, plastic bottles, and other sources. Not reassuring. It's not reassuring. Um, you know, I wish I could be more reassuring, but think about it. What was it, last month that we were talking about bisphenol A that lines cans of liquid baby formula, and that this is an estrogenic toxin, an estrogenic plastic, not a phthalate, that leaches into the um, formula. So how many estrogens can these kids swim in before we have some damage? And there's a website folks can get to get more, go to to get more information? Yeah, there is. Go to EW, EWG.org for starters and read about safer alternatives that will reduce your child's exposure to all of these various toxins. And today you're speaking at Baptist Hospital. At noontime in the Kitty Hawk Room, which is in the Family Practice Division, I'll be talking about toxins that make you fat. Want more information? Go to naturaltriad.com.